Welcome everyone. Today we have Berkay with us who worked at BCG for five years. And most importantly, he was an interviewer. So we're going to together talk about some insider tips coming from a former BCG interviewer. And he has a lot to say. Welcome again. Hello everyone. All right, let's get started. Brilliant. Do you want to first tell me about your background? Sure. Um, I joined BCG in 2016, so it's been seven years, and I quit BCG last month. Two years of that period I spent in the US doing my MBA at Columbia Business School, and for the rest of the five years I was working at BCG. I've completed probably around like 20, 25 cases at BCG. I did projects across many industries, but last years I was focusing on consumer and financial institutions practice areas. And as you said, over the last year, I was interviewer at BCG. I did more than 20 interviews probably. And yeah, I'm happy to share my insights with Fantastic. You. First of all, I'm super curious about the following. Does BCG provide any formal training? Yeah, actually you get a formal training and it consists of two main parts. The first part, I would say more like a theoretical part where you are instructed by a hiring manager um, about the interviews, uh, what to do in the interviews, how to evaluate the candidates, what are the dimensions that we look for, um, some do's and don'ts in the interviews. And secondly, I think more fun part is you actually go into real interviews and you shadow one interviewer, BCG interviewer twice so that you are just like quiet in the meeting room, uh, in the interview room, and then you just observe the interviewer and the candidates. And the second leg of this practice training is you do the interview and someone shadows you, someone senior, uh, more experienced uh, interviewer shadows you and provides you feedback after those interviews. And then you're an official interviewer. Amazing. And you talked about this training. Is it like a PDF file that you need to read through? Or is it an in-person kind of like a workshop setting? How do you mm -hmm. get that training? Hiring manager is actually presenting a deck, like 10 to 15 pages of deck. As I said, she or he goes through some interview guidelines for us. And then it's shared with you. And then you are reviewing it. And then you are preparing your own case and you test that case with an experienced interviewer just to collect their feedback as well to do the final uh, polishing to your case interviews. That's super important what yeah. you said. So you are creating your own cases exactly. based on your real life project. Yeah, you are supposed to create a case experience from your real life experience, but also um, you can be creative and create a case, but it needs to be a business case. Okay. Uh, and you need to validate it with an experienced interviewer. And typically, how many cases do you have per interviewer? It's recommended that you have at least two on top of your mic, just in case if the candidate knows the other case and maybe, they ask around. Yeah, sometimes it's helpful to change your case. And when you created your case studies, was there any definitely to do's or not to do's when you're creating those? Yeah, I mean, it needs to be, as I said, either real life example or very relevant to business, real uh, business case. We are not like preparing any brain teaser, some tricky questions um, these days are in the past. It needs to be just, yeah, in a business case, but it's up to you. Okay. And I'm super curious to know also whether the interviews are a definite can it let format or is it interviewer led or can it be a mix? Are you provided any clear guidelines on those? There is no any guideline on that one. It's solely dependent on the interviewer's um, style. From my experience, I usually start with candidate led interviews just to give the candidate some room to build his or her own structure, own framework, asking questions. But then sometimes I am switching to more like the interviewer led. Uh, style just if I would like to test some questions on the candidate or if I feel the candidate is struggling a little bit or um, digressing from where I want uh, so that like I can pull back him to the track it's mixed actually on and off. On our channel I keep telling everyone that there is no clear guidelines provided by BCG or Bain regarding how the format of the cases will be. Yes most likely you might get a candidate-led format but like you said it also depends on how ready you are to the interview, whether the interviewer feels like he wants to push you more to see certain skills and see how he can respond, then the case format may change a bit. Whereas in making see it's a bit more standardized. Yeah. It is normal that it's a bit more interviewer like. Yeah, it's more like a QA. Now let's get into the specifics. Can you give us a little bit of a glimpse around what kind of case studies you created and what do you ask your candidates? I'm actually leveraging a past project that I completed. It was a grocery retailer in Turkey. 
actually having the largest number of stores in Turkey. And they were considering an investments into financial services business. Interesting. Uh, yeah, um, that was a project that I worked and I enjoyed a lot. And I was using that case in my interviews. Can you give us more specifics around what are the questions you're asking? The client is like the grocery retailer and they are investigating to launch the buy now pay later product, the MPL product. What's that? I think it's pretty common nowadays, like Klarna, just, yeah, you are getting the product and pay later. Okay. It's the, the name speaks for itself, like buy now, pay later. And it's free of charge at the most of it. You are just postponing the payments. I'm asking whether the retailer should launch this product, what will be the benefits and of course, what will be the cost and whether they should go ahead for this. Okay, so it's more like a grocery retailer trying to branch out to the financial services space. Yeah, I remember seeing Tesco's and Sainsbury's having their own bank in here. So yeah, like yeah that's true. One. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, I think the case study is clear and also digging deeper into certain different pieces of analysis that you require the candidates to do. Yeah. So what is your expectation on that? Yeah, I mean, basically it's an investment case. So I'm expecting the candidate to come up with what will be the benefits or the revenue streams of that investment and what will be the cost and if it's worthwhile to invest or not. And of course, on top of some numerical calculations, I'm expecting the candidate to come up with some more qualitative risks and opportunities that needs to be considered. So it's pretty much around like some calculations and also some qualitative assessment. And would you say that case study is a bit harder or easier compared to the others? Because it sounds like a difficult case to me. It's not the easiest one, I can tell that. And what's your typical pass rate? 20%. Okay, so it's, it's a definitely tough one. So let's focus on that 20% of those candidates. Tell me what makes those candidates successful. What do they do differently? The case that I ask is not pretty straightforward. So uh, the first thing that the candidate should do is actually identifying the really the drivers, the benefits, how this investment will work out. Because as I said, it's a free product. Buy now, pay later. You are not charging customers for that. So how we are making money out of this? So it's complicated. Yeah, they, they should be able to identify the revenue drivers of that investment as well as the cost side. So what does it mean for a company to postpone their receivables? So what will be the cost side of it? Identifying the right drivers is the most important step. And once a candidate clearly identifies the drivers of that investment, then it becomes really much easier. And also it includes some calculations. So how comfortable with the numbers? It can be a deal breaker really. And also the communication. So how he or she communicates cases or findings like if he or she is comfortable with asking questions at the right time when he or she needs support so these are the elements that I'm looking for. Communication is key. I also tell my trainees as well that as they practice case studies they shouldn't just ask for feedback purely based on how they solve the problem but it's also about how they communicated their findings and so on because it is also one of the important decision criteria here. Exactly. So the other thing that I know that BCG is looking for is also effectiveness and impact, especially within the fit interview portion. Mm -hmm. So have you had this experience as well? Did you interview your candidates on the fit portion too? Sure, sure. Our interviews consist of two things, basically. Just one is the case interview, the other part is fit interviews. And in these fit interviews, actually, we are looking into the how strongly the candidate links his or her past experience with the consulting. So whether he or she was able to showcase the requirements or skill set that consulting requires, such as like the teamwork, like completing a project, working with deadlines. So if the candidate is able to actually carve out some example from previous experiences, whether it may be academical work, whether it may be a, a previous internship, whether it may be, I don't know, a nonprofit project, if she or he can bring some good examples that can relatable to consulting, that's a, that's a great thing. Absolutely. And we've actually uploaded a video on fit interviews a couple of weeks ago, where we highlight 24 most commonly asked questions in fit interviews. And we've structured our questions based on key skill set required in exactly. consulting, the likes of communication, time management, conflict resolution, and so on. So if you haven't checked this out, feel free to do that. And also thinking about some bad candidates, do you usually make your decision within the first few minutes of your case of the fit interview? Yeah, the initial two or three minutes actually gives you a lot of data and a lot of impression. And I would say maybe 60%, 70% of the time, first impression really is in line with the outcome. But I don't want to be biased after two or three minutes. I still want to give the candidate enough time to showcase his or her skills. But yeah, the initial minutes is also giving you a lot of actual insight. Yeah, same with my coaching sessions as well. When I help someone out, 
for the first two, three minutes into the case so that I usually have an idea whether mm-hmm. it's going to go good yeah. or bad. Yeah. And then I also change the style that I give the interview exactly how we do in real life. In terms of the actual formal procedure, so I definitely understand how you are looking into evaluating someone's performance when it comes to case and the fit. But what are the formal procedure like at BCG? Yeah. They must have given you certain guidelines or evaluation forms after of the course. interview you have to fill. Of course, of course. Then there is an evaluation form that you are supposed to actually complete and it consists of three to four dimensions, I guess. The first one is the problem solving and insight. So it's all around like the, how the candidate is approaching a problem, how he or she structures it, if he has the analytical skills or not. And then the practicality and effectiveness. So you are supposed to uh, solve the case within a 25 minutes, 30 minutes time period. So you should be really practical and you should really able to identify the real drivers of the case and focus on those. And finally, the communication. The communication is really important, how engaging you are in your communication. Uh, are you able to share the insights in a very clear and actionable way? So these are the things that we are looking. And of course, there is a professional attitude or something, however you call it, because when you are interviewing a candidate, you are thinking about whether I can put this guy in front of the client next week or not. So you are expecting the candidate to uh, show a certain level of professional attitude as well. Absolutely. If you want to check out our case videos already on our YouTube channel as well, towards the end of the video, we have a segment where the candidate's performance is evaluated exactly based on those two main dimensions, problem solving and insight and communication effectiveness. So everything you said would also be captured there. Or you can also go on and discover our Get to Offer course where we have a dedicated video just on performance evaluation too. And the last thing I want to discuss with you is if you have any tips and tricks Mm -hmm. for those who are currently preparing for their consulting interviews, what would you say? I mean, I can't share every uh, hidden secret sauce, but the preparation matters. It really matters, especially for the business case. Preparation is really important. My approach was the following. I spent maybe one or two weeks just having a theoretical study just reading the transcripts from previous uh, case interviews, uh, learning some frameworks. And then after two weeks, I was more focused on the practical training, which is much more, I think, important. And I spent most of the time there. And by that, I mean the mock interviews. So it would be great if you can find a friend or someone who can actually interview you, like a real interview. Just get a blank paper and start the case with it and let him or her ask questions and she or he can act like an interviewer and you feel like in a real interview. Because um, I did like maybe 20, 25 mock interviews and when I went to do uh, real interviews with companies, I just felt like I'm doing a case interview with my friends because it's the same experience, you know, it's on the table, someone is asking the question, asking the case, you are starting with a blank paper. So I saw its benefit a lot. So I highly, highly recommend that if you want to recruit for consulting, do like lots of mock interviews. When it comes to fit interview, as I said, you should find some elements from your past experience that can be relatable to consulting, whether it may be around like teamwork, completing a project end-to-end, doing some analysis, running some numbers and getting insight from that number and getting into action. So the things that the consulting requires, you did those in the past so that you can showcase like you have the skill set that the management consulting requires. No, I definitely agree. And when I also coach people, I typically ask them to do even more than 20, 25, almost around 40, yeah, 50. Yeah, if you have time, more than welcome. Practicing would be key, but before even doing that, it's important to get the theory right. So so we have our course and of course you can use other materials too for you to really understand the basics and then you have to do case studies to apply those. And same goes with the fit interviews. You need to know what skill set is required in consulting so that you can pick the right examples for you. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. And I hope you learned a thing or two from a former BCG interviewer. And if you like this video, please leave us a like before you go. And we're going to see you in the next video. Take care.